All right, so I'm going to be showing a complete disassembly of this Dell Inspiron model 5570. So first what you want to do is undo all the screws using a PH1 or a J1 screwdriver. The three towards the back here, they actually stay in place. You don't need to completely remove them. Just twist them until you hear the screw click. So as you can hear, it makes that clicking sound. So, okay. And then you'll know like they kind of come out, but they stay in there. All right, then these two screws are slightly smaller. You want to keep the screws in order. I don't know if these two are slightly different as well, but you want to keep all the screws in order be uh, because you don't want to mix them up. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven screws total. Then once you remove this screw, you can actually pull the CD drive out. So just pull it out like that. If you have a hard time pulling that out, what you can do is you can take like a small needle and then on the side of the CD slot here, there's a little hole up here. Okay, just stick the screw, the needle in there and it pops out. All right, then you can pull the whole tray out if that helps. Okay, so there you go. Once you remove the CD tray, uh, we want to remove the two screws under here as well. So these two screws are also different. So again, keep that in mind. Okay, after you do that, flip the computer. And then what I do is I have this screen. Usually I don't do this, but it's to show it easier on camera. But um, I put the screen like this so that way I can have this standing up. But basically, as long as you have the computer up like this, then along this edge, you can use a pry tool or your fingernails. And then I use my nails to push on the back while I pull on this. Okay, just like this. And go all the way around. Okay, be careful with the CD drive slot. And also be careful opening and closing the computer because these two screws help hold the hinge in place. So when those aren't in, it's a little bit weaker. Okay, so this customer said that they spilled some milk in here. So it might be, um, we'll see what's going on. They said they spilled on it about a month ago and let it dry up. Okay, so I'm just going around unclipping all the little clips. All right, towards the back, kind of have to wiggle it around just like this. Okay. All right, this side, the clips are kind of stuck. Let's see here. Sorry if I'm going off camera, it's hard to see what I'm doing while I'm trying to unclip this stuff. Okay, just like that, and then you can kind of wiggle the cover off and pull it out, okay? So I don't see any milk on here, so that's a good sign. Hopefully it all stayed under in the keyboard area. So we do have to replace the keyboard on this. So first thing you want to do is remove the battery after you get the cover off. Okay, so as you can see, these hinges are kind of coming up because there's only like these two side screws helping hold it in place. I am going to have to transfer everything over. So yeah, we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to run out of area to put my screws, but there's the battery here. It's held in, I think with four screws. So take the four screws out. Okay. So to get the connector out, let me zoom in. Okay, so the connector is right here. What you do is I use my fingernails on this white um, part of the battery connector and I just wiggle it to pull it back, just like this. Okay, and as you can see, the connector comes out. All right, it comes out just like that. If you don't have room, what you can do is you can lift the battery slightly to kind of pull it back a little um, while you do that. So sorry, it's out of view because it's zoomed in so much. But uh, what you can do is you can lift the battery slightly and then pull it back. I didn't need to do that, but if you need to, yeah. Okay, so the battery model number, if you need to replace it, is WDX0R. So here you go. WDX0R. Okay, I'm going to set the battery aside. And give me a minute, I'm going to do something with another computer. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So after you remove the battery, what you want to do is press and hold the power button to drain any power that's left in the computer. So open the thing slowly again. If you want um, to 
help it, you can hold the hinges and then twist the hinges up. All right, you do have to kind of hold the screen down. I just hold it down with my chest, okay, or my stomach. Then press the power button, hold it for about 15 seconds. All right. And then once you do that, you can close the hinges back down. We will have to remove this later, so yeah. Okay, so next thing, you can remove the two and a half inch SATA hard drive. There's also an SSD slot here. I believe this is a M.2. I believe it supports PCIe NVMe SSDs. I'm not 100% sure. You'll have to try it to be sh to be sure. But um, since it has a standard hard drive, I would assume it supports PCIe NVMe. All right, so let's take out the screws for the hard drive. So if you wanted to upgrade your hard drive, this is how you would do it. Just take out the four screws here, okay. Just like that. Okay, now that you got those screws out, you can lift it up by the metal bracket. Okay, just like this. Uh, this connector is still connected, so you do have to flip this latch up. Let me see if I can show you that. Okay, so here's this latch. This white part of the latch, just flip it up. Once it's flipped up like that, you can pull it out. Okay, this white piece isn't supposed to come out. I've seen some people, they don't flip it up properly and they rip that thing out be careful you don't pull it too far back but anyways here's the hard drive if you want to remove the connector you just pull this gray part out don't try and pry the black piece okay and then you can pull it like this all right so that's how you remove this connector so when you put a new hard drive or SSD in here you do have to transfer the bracket over so just keep that in mind all right oops too far there you go, so that's the hard drive. We're gonna set that aside as well. We're gonna have to transfer everything over because we are moving it to a new keyboard. So here we got this replacement keyboard. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly be moving things over as we go. This one, the fan needed to be repaired. That's why it has these yellow tapes here. I think I repaired it in another video. I might have a video already showing this model. But anyways, Let's see if we can remove the speaker without taking out the CMOS board. Okay, so I'm going to take out the speaker and I'm going to add it to the new keyboard as I go. So this comes out just like this. And then just make sure to thread it around. It has little guides that kind of let you know where this cable should go. But um, Yeah, so we're taking the speaker out just like this. And then to disconnect the speaker connector, you just get your fingernails uh, on the wings. Some people, if you don't have fingernails, I don't know what you'll use, maybe some tweezers or something, plastic tweezers, but just grab it and then just keep wiggling the connector like this and it will pop out just like that. Okay, so I'm going to transfer over the speakers now. So give me a second. I don't know if I should do all this off camera. Some people are in camera, but uh, you don't want to lay this piece on top of the other one, so I'm going to... So let me see if I can swap their places, and then I'll show you. Okay. There we go. We're just going to slot the cable all around here. like that make sure you got it slotted in right because you don't want to clamp this stuff down on top of it when you put the other pieces back okay let me switch back over so this CMOS board seems to have gotten some liquid in it so I don't know if this board is okay or not but we'll find out so we're going to disconnect all these cables so let me see here so this is the CD adapter cable so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to remove the optical disk drive connector here. So to do that, you just pull up this little white latch. Okay, then you can pull the connector out. Optical disk drive is 
connector is right here. So I'm going to remove the two screws. Hopefully it uses the same screwdriver. I can't see. Nope, that uses a smaller one. Okay, and there's no screw there. So let me grab a smaller screwdriver. So you can use a PH0 or J0. All right. Just like that. Take that screw out. Okay, once you do that, you can lift this connector out as well. So I'm going to put that Let's see here, so this went like that, okay. So I might put this connector in the board later, but it fits right here. So I'm probably going to put this later because if I put it now, the motherboard is going to sit on top of the cable. Okay, so now we're going to remove the cable down here for the CMOS battery thing. Just lift the latch up just like the other one. Okay, let's see if I can show this here. Okay, so we got the one screw holding this in place. Make sure you switch back to the PH1 screwdriver. Okay. Take out that screw. Okay. Let me check this. So there is an adhesive. You do have to be careful. Peel up this slowly and gently. Make sure, because you might rip these off if you just try and tear it out. Okay, they do have some capped on tape under here, so I am going to transfer this over. I don't know if it's needed, but might as well. Okay, sorry I'm doing this off camera, but I'm just transferring that piece of tape over to where it was on the other one. Um, I'm going to test this battery. So if you need to change the CMOS battery, you can just use a screwdriver, push it down, and then flip the battery up just like that. Okay, there's some residue in here, but hopefully it's okay. Okay, let's see here. So what we're gonna do now, this thing has like some rust or something on it. Yep, so it's probably dead. I might have to replace that battery. I'm wondering if that's causing the keyboard no, actually no the liquid went into the keyboard so I doubt it okay so I'm just cleaning off the residue from the battery at least the part that's kind of shorting it out and let's test it with this voltmeter okay so we're gonna switch this to DC volts 20 since it's only a 3 volt battery and let's see if it's getting connection here so Positives on top. All right, and we got this. So we're getting like 0 0.03 volts. So this battery is definitely dead. I'm gonna have to change that. Let me see if I have one. I'm gonna pause and I'll be back. Actually, I think I have one right here. Let's see here. There might be also some dead ones that I have in here. So let's check this. All right, so here you go, 3.14 volts. Okay, so their CMOS battery is definitely dead. So we are going to replace that battery. Okay. So make sure the stuff isn't shorted anymore. Okay, then we just drop the battery back in. To put the battery back in, you just push that in same way that you pushed it forward before and then push it down, okay? So we're going to set that aside as well. Actually, I can install that into the keyboard right now. So we'll do this, make sure it's not resting on anything weird. Okay, so we'll take this. All right, and then we'll put this screw back in. that piece in side all right so you got the trackpad connector here so we're gonna unlatch that as well and we'll pull this back be very careful with this cable okay it's kind of held down with adhesive on the other side and there's not much room for it to move so what you want to do is get underneath and then pull it back oh it's kind of stuck in there there we go so there's some 
milk residue on this as well so I'm going to try and clean it. The trackpad was working so it's probably okay but uh, I'm going to clean it just in case. Okay, You don't want it to cause some corrosion there. All right, then you got the keyboard backlight cable there. We're gonna disconnect that. Got the keyboard connector here. Disconnect that as well. All right, pull the keyboard connector out. I definitely see some, actually, is that just writing? What is that? Hmm. The connector itself looks okay. So the milk must have completely fried something inside. Uh, I'm not sure what this small connector is here. It might be for the power button. Oh, let me show you here. Sorry. So there's the power button and the fingerprint sensor, I believe, in one, in two things. So there's a cable here and a cable up here. So we have to remove both of these. Okay, flip that up. Pull that cable out. You got the LCD or LVDS connector. Uh, if you are touching this connector to remove it, make sure you held down the power button. If you don't, you can actually fry the motherboard circuit for the backlight and stuff. Okay, so we're going to unroute the wiring from the fan. Okay, and unroute it all the way here because we are going to have to take it out completely. Be careful with the tape because the tape is on these cables. So when you peel it up, you don't want to pull on the cables. You want to hold the cable down while you peel the adhesive out, okay? Just like that. Okay, so we'll guide it out. It does tuck underneath this hook here as well, so keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna have to take this connector out. Then we're gonna take the fan out. So the fan has three screws here. There's a lot of screws in here, so keep that in mind. You're gonna have to try and keep them all in order. If you're not sure, you can kind of take pictures of them as you go. But uh, my memory with this is usually pretty good. So I put them in kind of an order on my desk so I can keep it in the right places. Okay, so we'll take the fan out. So the fan connector, just like the speaker connector, you just wiggle the, the, the wings. If you can't reach it with your finger, you can use like a small tool. Just make sure you don't hit the motherboard with it. Okay, just like that. All right, so the fan can be removed now. Okay, we'll set that aside. All right, so again, you got two connectors here. I'm not sure which is which. I think this is the sensor thing, the board for the fingerprint sensor, and then the power button's here. And then it has a cable going into here, into this area. All right, so let's see, we got all of those out. Let's pull this cable out. Okay, we got all of that out. Um, the RAM, if you're wondering, let me show you here. So the RAM, just like every other model, you just pull these tabs to the side and it'll pop up at an angle. And this is PC4 2400T, okay? All right, so we'll put that back in. Push that back down. The wireless card, I guess we'll remove it as well, okay? So wireless card, just remove the screw here. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's going to be tough because I'm running out of desk area as I <laughs> remove screws, but here you go. So remove the one screw. Make sure you get good pressure in there so that you don't strip the screw. It did skip a little when I tried taking it out. Okay, so take that screw out. Lift it up slightly, and then you can slide this plastic connector back. So to put it back, you have to kind of, it goes underneath the board and then slides on top okay just like that so we'll take that out and the wireless antennas black arrow for the black wire white arrow for the white wire um, to remove it you just pull the tail of the antenna straight up okay so grab it close to the connector as you can and then just pull the wire straight up just like this okay just pull it straight up all right then you get the wireless card out like that and then you can just wiggle and pull the wireless card out. Okay, there we go. So we'll set the wireless card aside as well. Okay, we're almost there. So we got the DC jack or the charge port jack connector. So to remove that, same thing like the audio uh, or the speaker connector, you just grab the edges and then you kind of wiggle it and pull it back. Okay, so we got that out. Now we are going to take the 
let's see, should we do the motherboard first? Yeah, we'll do the motherboard first. So let's see, we have to take the hinge out here first. All right, so there's one screw here. I am going to have to reapply some thread locker for the hinge screws just to make sure they hold in really strong. That's usually one thing I check on every computer I work on. If the hinge screws come loose, you want to do that, okay? So these screws were pretty tough to remove. I think I did that last time. All right, so get that one screw out. And then there's two screws to the sides here. So you want to remove all three of these screws. Okay. And just to make it easier for me to remember, I'm going to remove the other hinge screws and put them next to these hinge screws, okay? So on this side, oops, on this side, there's the two screws here. Sorry, it's dark, but uh, yeah. All right, so we'll remove the two screws from here. There's one here and then the other screw under it here. Okay. So it's probably going to be good to remove this first. Oh, I think this one, this side of the hinge thing, I think it's broken actually. So I don't think this screw is going to come out. I might just lift it up. So what you do is you lift up the hinge. Okay, it's stuck. I don't know why. Let me see if I can get the screw out. It doesn't want to come out. Okay, I think I just have to pry it out. Yeah, so this is what I mean. The screw area, the mounts aren't very strong. So as you can see, the plastic, it didn't hold this in very well. So to remove those, what I have to do is use pliers. Since we're changing the bottom shell, it doesn't need to be repaired or replaced or anything. But usually these, they break a lot very often. So the way you fix that, let me take the screw out first. If I can. Wow, it's stuck really strong in there. I don't know if I can remove this one. Okay, I think it's coming out now. There we go. Okay, so like I was saying, if you need to repair this, so usually you would get a strong glue, like JB Weld. Okay, so you can get a two-part epoxy JB Weld, and then you put a little bit of it in here, and then you can put this uh, brass, the brass piece back in there. But you want to put the screw in soon after, because if you don't, then if the glue got inside the brass thing, then you'll never be able to put that back in, okay? So for now, I guess I'll just throw that in there. Okay. So, let's see, we should be able to remove the screen. So like you saw, I pried up this hinge. Now we're gonna pry up this hinge as well. Okay, just like that, lift it up. And then we should be able to lift out the screen assembly and separate it from the rest. So I'm gonna lift up the keyboard assembly like this. Make sure that you unrouted the wireless antennas Okay, because you don't want them to get caught and stuck and then you yank it out. So make sure to remove this first. Okay, just like that. All right, now we should be able to lift the keyboard assembly up and then pull it away from the screen. Okay, so we're gonna set the screen aside because we don't need to do anything with this. If you do need to take the screen out, it's like all, most the other screen models, you just pull this out the plastic. I don't want to take it out because there's risk it can damage the screen. So I'm going to leave that in there. Okay, so now let's see what else do we got to remove from here. We kind of got to do it in order. So this one ends up on top, this one ends up on the bottom. So I'm going to actually leave this in place. I think this part is taped on the other one. So I'm going to remove, let's see if I can remove the motherboard. Oh, the charge port you can remove first, I believe. It doesn't look like it's trapped by anything. So there's one screw holding it in here. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, so there's the one screw holding it in right there. So undo that screw. 
okay and then you can lift the charge port out and just unroute it from these okay there you go set that aside all right so now for the motherboard let's see how many screws if we need to remove a whole bunch or something so nothing holding that there's one screw up in this corner it's a small silver screw so I'll remove that one okay and I think that's it okay so once you get everything else out it looks like there's only that one screw now you can actually lift the whole board up just be very careful you don't get it caught on any wires and you can take the board out so there's nothing on the bottom there's some um, milk residue here so I am going to have to clean that up a little bit. I don't see anything as far as the keyboard goes. Hopefully this isn't the reason why the keyboard is damaged. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of residue here. There, yeah, on here and here. So this says VGA and this says wide area network. So I don't think those should affect the keyboard. So I'm just gonna clean those things off. Use a toothbrush and just brush it up a little bit. Make it a, get rid of the shorted connectors. Okay. So I am going to have to spray this down with a little rubbing alcohol or something. Or maybe just clean it with a little water and then dry it up real good. Okay, I'm just inspecting the rest of the board. Yeah, let me put, I'm going to put a tiny bit of water on it. So as long as you make sure to remove all the electricity from the board, water won't actually hurt the thing. But I just got a little water on my finger. Okay. Just rubbing it on there. And then I'm just scrubbing the corrosion off of it. Okay. And then you kind of want to dry it if you have like a, air blower or something. I'll just use this to dry it up. Okay. Let's scrub it a little more. Make sure that the corrosion isn't crossing any pins. And hopefully that will be okay. Okay. So hopefully you can see the difference now. There's no more of that white crusty stuff on it. Okay. Some of the pins do look kind of bad, but for the most part, it looks okay. So we'll leave it as is. All right, so we'll set the board aside for now. Okay, then you'll have to keep in mind the way they bent these keyboard connectors and everything. The keyboard backlight connector, we are going to have to peel it up and move it out of the way. Okay. And then we're gonna have to remove the trackpad here. So let's see if you can see this, okay. So I'm gonna transfer over the trackpad first. So there's four screws at the top of the trackpad. Let's remove those four. I don't know why they put this adhesive thing. There's like a um, fabric-y threaded metallic tape adhesive there maybe it's to ground it okay so then I'm gonna remove the two screws here and hopefully after that we can pull the whole trackpad out okay so we'll take this piece off first okay so this metal piece just allows the button to get pressed on this um, bent indented part here so I'm gonna clean that out all right and now we should be able to pull the whole trackpad out so I'm lifting it up from the bottom and I'm pushing through the bottom okay and again there's this adhesive here so I'm gonna tilt it all the way up and then hopefully I can peel it away this way okay uh, it doesn't want to come off so I might have to peel the adhesive first actually okay so let's peel this adhesive off Oh, I hate this kind of metallic adhesive tape. All right, and be very careful with the trackpad cable. I might just cut this because it doesn't want to come out. 
So let me try again if I can peel it one more time. So I'm just lifting it up and then I'm gonna tilt it. And let's peel it back. Okay, there we go, it did come off. So there we go, we got the whole trackpad. Be careful with this, you don't want to damage it. Okay, so I'm gonna get the other keyboard and put this in. All right, so we'll get the other keyboard. I actually have this brand new there, so that adhesive will get transferred over. Let me try and rub off the some of the adhesive residue from this old one. Okay, it won't all come off, but hopefully it's okay. All right, so now make sure you keep the cables out of the way. Then plop the new one in. Okay, you don't want to yank on that cable. Go. Okay, so that's in. Now we want to put this bracket back on top. Just like that. Put in the two screws at the bottom. For these, I might actually want to use some blue thread locker just because I don't want it coming out. So I got some blue thread locker here that I'm going to use. Okay. Because if this, if this comes out, then your mouse isn't going to work right. So I want to make sure. Ooh, I put way too much on there. Slip back in the excess. Okay. Go so put in the screw with some added thread locker. Put too much, so I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Okay, now we'll grab the other screw, take the screw back out, add just a tiny bit of thread locker on there. All right. I'm going to test this first, the clicking mechanism. Okay, it clicks okay. So I've got that in place. I'm going to put down this adhesive, so I'm peeling off this and taking off that protective adhesive layer. Okay. There we go. So we put this new metallic. If you're buying a used keyboard, it probably won't have that, but probably you don't have to worry about it. I don't think it's necessary for anything. All right, so now we're gonna put back the other four screws. Put too much, this thread locker comes out too fast, so. Okay. Clean up the excess again. Make sure the screws are nice and tight. All right. Just like that. Last screw for the trackpad. All right, there we go. So again, you do want to test the trackpad, make sure it clicks okay. It is slightly over to one side, so I'm going to loosen the screws a little and then see if I can adjust that. Let's loosen them. Hopefully I can still adjust it even though I already put down that metal piece. Oh, it doesn't really move anyway, so I guess that's just by design. Okay. Alright, so 
I'm just going to hold it as much to this side as I can, but it doesn't look like it moves anywhere anyways. Okay, so we'll tighten down the screws now. All right, so make sure it clicks. Yep, it's clicking good. There we go. So we'll set that aside again, and let's see what else we need to remove from this old one. Okay, so all that's left, I think, now are the power button and the fingerprint sensor. So let's remove those. Okay, these might be held down with adhesive, and yes, they are. So be careful when you peel these up. You kind of want to keep them as flat as possible. You don't want to pull them straight up. Okay, and be careful with the creased parts. You don't want to smash them down and make them uh, crease too hard or it can damage the cables internally. All right, so there we go. There are two screws holding this one and then this I think is just held in with adhesive. So we do have to separate these two cables careful with that just like that okay so we'll remove the two screws these do use like ph0 or ph00 screws so keep that in mind okay so take these two screws out there's one big screw on the left and then a smaller one to the right of it all right let's see if we can lift this up this okay so they actually even remove the hole so even the plastic clicking part of the button is a separate piece it looks like so I need to peel this stuff off again just like the other one let me zoom in okay my phone is getting hot it might overheat soon but let's try and peel this stuff off Okay, and then you can peel this back. Okay, so now we should be able to lift the bottom part up and we need to, uh-oh, it overheated. I'll be back.